OpenAI agent builder. So a lot of videos around the space. Uh, why this is uh, not actually something that can be used right now and th that is not something good. So um, I see a lot of people say this is the actual tool to be the automation killer, the anident killer, the Zapier killer. But in reality, there are a lot of problems. Uh, uh, there are a lot of problems. First off is that people in the space don't have a clear understanding of what uh, how these tools are used because maybe they never use this tool once in their life and second thing is that there's a fundamental difference over here and the open ai tool is fundamentally different for any other automation platform uh, in the space and i will show you uh how over here uh by showing you the three key problems that the software has so problem number one is strictly a developer tool so if i go directly over here and uh, if i show you an example of a open ai builder this is a, one of their templates. Um, you can uh, you can create something like that. You can create an, a, an agent uh, like this and uh, have uh, different tools. But the way this is architected and the way the tool uh, is created is this is strictly for developers who need to quickly prototype some kind of thing and then they need to pass this over into code because. Uh, the way it works is you create the, the structure over here, you create the agent over here, and then you click on this code over here, and uh, this uh, is uh, what uh, what you need on, on your side to import this directly within your website. So that is why this is uh, a, um, a developer code. Um, the second reason also related to this kind of thing is that there is no simple way to deploy agents. So as you see right now, we have uh, this example, uh, we have this beautiful agent that is able to respond to customer queries, but uh, what if we want to use that? What if we want to use that right now? What if we want to give a URL to someone to test it out? Well, if we go over here into the publish and say uh, new awesome uh, agent and click on publish, we, we publish the agent. This is uh, in production. But in order to use this, we need to um, use this chat kit. So this is another thing that OpenAI just released to add a chat within your website. And all of this is something that needs to be done through code. So there is no way to actually use this kind of agent. Meanwhile, if we go, for example, on uh, NADN, so what I did over here is uh, I just replicated this exact workflow that was created by OpenAI in NADN. And um, if I go over here, click on save, for example, now nothing is, is locked, but uh, over here I can make the chat public. And if I click on this link, obviously right now it uh, doesn't pound, but let me uh, test it once again. And um, yeah, as you can see over here, this is directly, this works uh, immediately. So. Um, and this can be tested out, people can actually uh, judge that, and uh, all things of that nature. So this is another important thing of uh, uh, understanding that the thing that OpenAI built isn't something that is actually easy to use, it's something that helps developers, uh, maybe helps developer in uh, creating structure over here. Uh, although developers might be more used to like writing code, so maybe this doesn't even help them as well. So um, yeah, that is that. The other thing over here uh, that I haven't talked about is MCPs. So MCP is the only system to get external data that uh, OpenAI right now can use. So if we go over here and uh, uh, what we see over here in terms of tools is uh, MCPs. So MCPs are uh, essentially ways that agents connect to external data, but over here, we can just use um, OpenAI MCPs and other MCPs, but this is actually the only way they can connect to external data. So uh, there's no other way to use tool calling or uh, any other things like that. In NADN, for example, what we have over here is uh, we can uh, use tools, and those tools are directly created within uh, um, directly created within NADN. We can set up uh, uh, connections directly within NADN. We don't have to worry about uh, everyone adopting the, the MCP protocol for every single thing, but 
Um, we can also build our own tools if we really wanted to. And uh, also, MCPs are very new and very uh, and could be prone to um, hacker attacks uh, that are not even yet discovered. So that is another thing on top of uh, everything that we discussed over here. And um, yeah. So also to give you a little bit of context on this kind of thing, uh, this is like I I had a search on what is the difference between uh, tools within NADN and uh, MCPs within NADN, and so NADN AI agents tools are callable actions inside a workflow system. So they are essentially just nodes. Meanwhile, MCP is uh, the protocol that standardizes different apps and uh, how um, they call tools uh, across different servers. Um, yeah. Uh, last thing that I wanted to show you over here is an article that was created by Langchain. Uh, for context, uh, Langchain is a software that is responsible for agent building uh, um, software. So essentially, it's uh, um, essentially is uh, kind of a um, kind of the, the structure that uh, is essentially the structure that uh, allows NADN to create this kind of agent. So. And it then is the visual representation of this. Uh, Langchain is what is under the hood. And um, yeah, they build another, they build this, like um, they created this uh, uh, blog post pretty quickly. And um, yeah, a couple of things that I mentioned over here is that um, it seems that this tool was created uh, for technical users or for non technical users. Meanwhile, this is actually not uh, um not, not useful for non-technical users uh, as well as a couple of other things such as like what is the difference between workflows what is the difference between agents i mean there's a lot of uh, fluff going around the space uh, um yeah but uh, the two problems over here are essentially this one there are no low barrier to entry so there's no one that can enter this tool and like try to build some agent that will replace your NADN instance or um, whatever kind of agents you build in production. Um, and the second thing is that you cannot manage really complex tasks over here. So I hope um, all is good. I wanted to do this video very quickly just to show my thoughts on this. Personally, at the beginning, I was uh, uh, kind of, uh, I don't want to say worried, but I was kind of uh, um, say cool open ai is entering the space surely they're gonna do a lot of stuff but after viewing the release after like having a look at the tools i identify these problems i think i'm not gonna touch this kind of tools uh, um for the time being uh, maybe in the future they will add additional features but yeah i don't know so um, yeah that's it on my side if you're interested in uh, um, building ai agents the right way not <laughs> going through the hype and not uh like looking at these tools such as like the end all be all tools but like following a really clear process you can check the link in the description we can book a consultation together and we we'll discuss that more with that said that's everything on my side hope this is useful talk to you soon bye bye